Okay, so this is just a slight correction to the fixed size disk and dynamically allocated disk resizing VirtualBox tutorials. So the first part only applies to Linux VMs and the second part will cover Windows VMs not booting. So if I just open up top in this VM, you'll see that we don't have any swaps. And to confirm this, if I just cat out slash proc slash swaps, you'll see that we don't have any. So let's just fix that now. So the first thing that you need to do is we need to get the UUID of our new swap partition that we created. So if you just type in sudo blkid and just enter in your password, the UUID that we need is this one here. As you can see, it says here type swap. So this is the swap partition well the UUID for the swap partition that we created so I'm just going to copy that and I'm just going to compare that to what's currently in my FS tab file so I'm just going to sudo grep for swap um, in slash etc slash FS tab and as you can see they're different so this is the old one that's in our FS tab file currently and this is the new one that we created so all we need to do is replace this with this now you can use any text editor that you want to do this, but make sure it's a plain text editor. Um, I'm just going to use gedit to do this, but you also need to be root to edit this file. So I'm just going to type in sudo uh, gedit and we're going to edit slash etc slash fs tab and gedit will open. I'm just going to maximize that and we just need to edit this line here so look for where it says swap and the UUID here so we need to get rid of this and paste in the one that we created and then just hit control S to save that and that's done so I'm just going to exit gedit and we're done all we need to do now is reboot this VM and our swap partition should be working. Okay, so I've rebooted this VM and let's just check for the swap partition again. So let's just run top. And as you can see, the swap partition is working. I'm just gonna quit that. And I'm just gonna cat out slash proc slash swaps. There we go, there's our swap partition. So now on to non-booting Windows VMs. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a Windows 10 VM and I've already expanded the disk and let's just try and boot that now. So as you can see, it won't boot. So I'm just gonna close this now and just power it off. Okay, so let's fix that. So the first thing that I need to do is just open up storage and click on this empty disk and I'm just gonna load up any version of Linux. So I'm just gonna use Ubuntu 12.04. Now, all I really need is Gparted. So if you have a Gparted ISO or some other version of Linux, just use that. It doesn't really matter. You just need to use Gparted. So I'm just gonna click OK. And I'm gonna start this VM up. So it's just gonna boot from this Ubuntu 12.04 disk. Uh, just be ready to press F12 as you're booting because you may need to select it from a list. So I'm just going to click start and I'm just going to hit F12 and then we get this boot menu. So I need to boot from CD-ROM which is C. So all I need to do is just press C on the keyboard and we're booting from that disk. Okay, so Ubuntu has now booted up and I'm just going to open up Gparted. So Gparted. And as you can see, I have just got this one 60 gigabyte disk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click on the disk down here. And I'm just gonna click on manage flags. And I'm just gonna look for the boot flag, which is here and just select it and click close. And that's it. So if you just have a look at this flags tab over here, you can see we have the boot flag on this partition. And we can exit Gparted now and shut down this VM. 
So I'm just going to do that now and I'll show you how to reboot your Windows VM. Okay, so just before we start this Windows VM up again, um, just make sure that in storage, your disk drive is now empty because we don't want to boot from the live CD again and just click OK. And we can now start this. So there you go, you can see that this Windows VM is booting with an expanded disk and everything seems to work fine. Now I know that in the previous tutorials on expanding disks in VirtualBox, I didn't go into how to do it with a Windows VM and I noticed in the comments that some of you guys were having issues with it and hopefully that should have fixed the issues that you were having. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.